Hans Ed DeCosta with what I think is a very profound lesson. It's a lesson I learned long, long ago about the importance of communication and how it has very little to do with your mouth. So the name of this is The Three Keys to Effective Communications. Now, the famous uh, author George Bernard Shaw has what I think is the best quote about communication. He says, the single biggest problem with communication is the illusion that it has taken place. And that is to say that message intended is not message received. That what person A said and meant is perceived by person B in a very different way. Sometimes a subtly different way, but quite often in a profoundly different way. And if you want to be an effective communicator, you're going to follow these three keys to communication. And of course, there are many other important elements of communication. But in my book, these three will separate you from the vast majority of communicators out there in the world. So the first one is listen for understanding. Listen for understanding. It sounds self-evident. Why else would you be listening if you weren't listening for understanding? But think about your own experiences. Have you ever been speaking to someone and they don't appear to be listening to you? Maybe they're looking at you. Maybe they were nodding their head. But they look like they're waiting for you to take a breath or to pause so that they can say something in response or a reply. Or maybe it has nothing to do with with what it is you're saying. Certainly if there's a disagreement or a debate, I don't think I don't think person A is listening to person B when person B is speaking or person B listening to person A when they're speaking, when it's a disagreement or a debate. But I'm talking about just normal everyday business conversation or personal conversation. Listen for understanding. Just Park that part of your brain that wants to process what they're saying so that you can agree, disagree, segue off of what it is they're saying to add some particular anecdote. Don't do that. Resist the temptation to do that and have the discipline required to concentrate on what it is they're saying so that you truly understand. Stephen Covey talks about it, and I refer to him so many times. He says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. It's very, very difficult for two people to b both develop an understanding of one another simultaneously. The best way to do that is for the, f for the first person to, to understand the second, then for the second to understand the first. If you try to do them simultaneously, neither one of you will understand the other, sad to say. So if the first key to effective communication is to listen for understanding, the second key is to confirm your understanding. Once you believe you've understood the person, give them some evidence that you have. Because whether you have or you haven't, that's a good practice. If you have understood them, you say, hey, let me, let me play that back. What I heard you saying, or if I understood you correctly, you feel this way, or you thought this, or you did X, Y, and Z, or you interpreted that piece of information in this way. If you are correct in your paraphrasing of what it is they've communicated to you, what are they going to say? They're going to say exactly, that's right. That's right, you got it. It's important to note here that when you paraphrase, when you play it back for them, what I heard you saying or if I heard you correctly, it doesn't mean you agree with them. You may, but you could, you could say that honestly to confirm your understanding of an opinion that you do not share with the person. All you're doing is acknowledging and validating that I've understood you. So again, seek to understand, listen for understanding, and then confirm your understanding. The best examples I've ever, I've ever heard have been the pilot and control tower. The pilot says something, the control tower repeats it. The control tower says something, and the pilot repeats it. Of course, the consequences of miscommunication in that particular set of circumstances are obviously catastrophic. And so it's very, very important for them to be exactly on the same page in terms of what elevation and course heading and, and the direction from the control tower to 
to the pilot and the airplane and the information that the, the airplane, the pilot is giving to the control tower in terms of what he or she is seeing and what it is they're, they're about to do. So, so vital. So again, I'm not suggesting that you, you behave like a pilot, but think about it. Think about it in those ways. And, and, and when you confirm that you've heard them, you will see that there's a connection there. When this is really all about connecting with people, right? Right, everyone communicates, few connect, John Maxwell's famous book. Right? The people that connect are those that have a true understanding. And then the third is beware of the myth that written communication avoids the possibility of, un of misunderstanding. You know what? There's too many variables. I'm just going to write it all down. It can be plain, black and white, right there on a piece of paper or on your screen. No possible misinterpretation whatsoever, because I'm going to write it down and all you have to do is read it. I've heard this time and time again from people who believe that what they've written and the meaning behind what they've written is exactly what the reader is going to interpret and understand when it's not. The words are there. The person can read. They will read the literal words but they will not extract the same meaning. It's almost a given that they will extract either a subtly different meaning or in some cases a profoundly different meaning. One of the examples I give and exercises I do in live workshops has to do with a sentence, and I'll just use a, a, a sample of the sentence. I never said that you stole my bicycle. I never said that you stole my bicycle. How clear is that? Pretty clear statement, right? I never said that you stole my bicycle. Compare the complexity of that sentence to a typical email. It's pretty straightforward and simple. You would think that a hundred people would interpret that sentence in pretty much the same way. I never said that you stole my bicycle. But watch what happens when you change the emphasis from one word to the next. What if what the person wrote was really, I never said that you stole my bicycle? What is the implication of the emphasis on I? Of course, it's that someone else said that you stole my bicycle. I never said that you stole my bicycle. Now I'm accentuating, I'm exaggerating the word said. What is the implication of that emphasis? It's that I think you've stole my bicycle, but I've never said it out loud. I never said you stole my bicycle. You get the point. I, <laughs> I said you stole someone else's bicycle, but I never said you stole my bicycle. The point is, it's the same words in all of those examples, but the meaning of those words are fundamentally different. I've had people just about fall out of their chair reading their own emails after this exercise because they see so many ways that you can misinterpret. Even a rather short sentence, there's a magnet on, on my in-law's refrigerator that says, let's eat, Grandma. Let's eat, Grandma. Okay. In one, it has a comma, and the other one, there's no comma. And it's a joke about punctuation. And of course, the difference in the meaning is fundamental, isn't it? In one, you're inviting grandma to come and sit down and share a meal. And the other one, you're saying, hey, everyone, let's make the meal grandma. Of course, it's a joke, but it just emphasizes, particularly in our multicultural society and the business that we do with people that have uh, different languages, different uh, source languages, that may be speaking your language as a second or third language and the nuances and subtlety associated with, with your choice of words is lost on them. It doesn't mean they're not intelligent. Of course they're intelligent. It just means they didn't understand what you intended. So, my friends, you get the point. You want to be effective in your career. You want to be effective in your personal life. Work on your communication skills and work on these three keys to effective communications. Again, Ed DeCosta, I hope you found this helpful. And wherever you are, 
Make it a great day. Thank you.